Welcome to Basement Fodder, the only show whose hosts have collectively decided they would not fuck a bearded lady no matter how hot she was, other than the beard. I'm Todd. I'm Dave. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. <laughs> this question was posed to me. I was hanging out with a friend the other night, and uh, we were looking at, uh, they follow this bearded lady on Instagram. And by the way, she is not hot. Oh, my God. Like, she I was looks, about to say. Was she like, looks like a bearded man. Like, she's really specify. like. <laughs> but, who's who's but the question was posed to me, like, if she was extremely hot other than her facial hair. Would a you know would you would you be able to to uh, seal the deal? And I, I I could not do it. And if I felt beard against my beard, I would just be like, ah, windsock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> so it's been a big week for uh, trailers of different things that we've seen. Yeah. As I say, there was the both video games. Oh yeah. Movies. Uh, some TV shows. Lots of stuff dropping. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, I want to talk about this because it's just fresh in my head because I literally just watched it, the Mass Effect Andromeda trailer. Yeah, we'll go video games first. So, uh, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. It, it still got goosebumps from watching yeah. it. Like, if you were a Mass Effect fan... And I am. Yeah. <laughs> and I quite enjoy Mass Effect, too. Um, I would have to say, this one looks good. This one looks really interesting as far as it kind of has that like a little bit of that star trek vibe as mm-hmm. far as like you're more explorers than you are soldiers yes, which makes it like, even more exciting for yeah me. you're 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 considered pathfinders which mm-hmm. i love that term pathfinder um you're looking for a new earth like this is post all that shit that happened you're looking for a new earth and it's like it's humans, but it's like collective of other races too that seem to uh, like lost out in the war, and uh, I don't know what's up as far as the main character. Like, is it a created character like Shepard, where you can alter it? I would imagine so. Probably they they like to do that. Yeah, yeah. it. So it, I would assume so. Yeah. Uh, but man, it, it looks good. It looks like just story wise, it looks really good. They introduced some new races. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Archon looks really He's interesting. Pretty badass, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a very like it's domineering. Mm-hmm. You know, I play puppeteer, chess master type thing. Yeah. Um, of course, there's a Krogan. You know, we know you love your Krogan. Gotta have a Krogan, man. Ah, you gotta have a Krogan. I just, I really, I'm looking forward to it because it's been quite a while since Mass Effect Three. And yeah. a lot of the ending of Mass Effect Three left a lot of people it was controversial, was disappointed. Best. Yeah, at best, like I don't think it was a bad ending necessarily. It's just if it was going to be the end of the story, it needed to be something a little bit better. It needed to be something less just completely ambiguous or completely deflated, and that's what I think the problem with it was. I think ambiguous works if it had been done a little bit differently. Like Mm. if, if it was a different type of ambiguity to like, leave it open for this, Mm -hmm. that's fine and stuff. But it was one of those, you know, it was such a dramatic ending to Mm -hmm. just be left that way. It was kind of like, you know, well, you get no resolution whatsoever. Yeah. (laughs) Cause like with dragon age, every game is a different character you're identifying but with mass effect it was shepherd for all three yeah and as good a character as shepherd is shepherd deserves an end yeah a definitive like and a good way to go out yeah like like he dies and he well i mean spoilers depending on how you finish the game he dies yeah and but, he dies for what he believes in or whatever, or not yeah, depending on how you finish how you, but it's just it was kind of a shitter to be honest yeah. like it, there's it, no good ending to that game. Like, there's like, uh, there's no happy ending at all whatsoever. Well, yeah, that's good. There yeah. shouldn't be a happy ending. Well, there there could be a positive ending, and no. I don't even think there's a positive ending. To no, that there game. does not need to be a positive ending for that because there, it in the scope of what it was, there was there was no possible positive outcome. Yeah. There was never going to be one because of what it was. It was basically against a shitstorm. You, you, there was no, there was at best survival. And that's what Andromeda kind of like looks like it picks up on is mm-hmm. like survival because it's like if you had had a positive ending, I feel like Andromeda wouldn't have been like it would be great because it's another Mass Effect game. But I think the fact of like how the ending was so shitty, mm-hmm. no matter what, it's kind of that's the thing. Like Andromeda is the hope. 
because you're like, oh, what are we gonna? You know, you're you're doing the exploration for the hope. I think so, it hinges like it hinges on if Mass Effect as a franchise is strong enough to be driven by a non shepherd you know, storyline game because it hasn't happened yet. And there's been all everything has been shepherd based. I feel like the game, the the story, the universe is strong enough. I do too. I because do too. like. I don't know how well it did, but the animated uh, uh, Mass Effect video that they did and stuff where it was Freddie Prince Jr.'s oh, character anime. and stuff, yeah. yeah, it had other characters. I was, when I watched it, I was uh, completely okay with Shepard just being mentioned and not even being there. Like, whether it's a male or a female Shepard didn't matter. Like, that's the thing because... <laughs> Whereas in the Dragon Age universe, it's very each thing is very hinged on the warden, mm -hmm. you know, Hawk, the inquisitor and stuff. And like, you know, there is that group and they are very quintessential, but with like mass effect, whereas much shepherd is a part of it and stuff. It's very much like a team thing. Like, mm -hmm. so shepherd wouldn't have been shit without, you know, Garrick and all the rest of the team. Like, that's the thing. Like shepherd was just a guy he was the leader he was a great leader yeah and stuff but that's what he was he was great because he was the leader character you know and i feel like because of that and the world they built it's still something you could just you want to see more like yeah. whereas like in thetis you still want to see more but they have a somewhat limited you know you you have just that world whereas yeah. mass effect you can go and just go to any world that's true stuff so and like he was the soldier he was the quintessential like leader soldier guy whereas like i feel like this new guy male or female the new character is not necessarily the soldier but more the like the explorer you know so yeah. it's, it's it's definitely it's transitioning i that. think here's the thing you have one of two ways to go when you have this sort of story like, they've done it with the other ones with Shepard, where, like, if you equate it to Star Trek, like, Shepard is your Kirk or your Picard or whatever, and then everybody else is, like, your your team. Yeah. And your surrounding characters. And it could go that way, where, like, yes, it's an ensemble thing, but there is definitively a lead. Yeah. Or it can be where everybody is equal. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, like, it's hard to do that sometimes in video games, especially if you're trying to do like a, a an actual main story. Yeah, because you need someone to focus on. And I and I think he is going to be the focus. Yeah. Like he is going to be the captain or the leader person and stuff. Right. But it is one of those. The world is so strong that you can have another ship with another crew. Yeah. And stuff because like even with Star Trek, Star Trek is such a strong thing that you know because in fantasy there's always the hero mm -hmm. but in, in science fiction i always feel like there's the team like mm -hmm. science fiction to me is a little bit more of a team well, there's plenty thing. of sci-fi that's just one main character too there is but i always feel like the team stuff's a little bit stronger yeah you know like it, it it's a better complete story and that's why i think i think it's i think it can do a non-shepherd i i mean I, I guarantee he's probably gonna get mentioned probably like you know because the mythos of Shepard. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, the, the new team could be just fine. I, you know, because it is one of those things where Shepard is what you make it, yeah. you know, as far as a character. So, well, this is like going when back when they, you know, first decided to do next generation. It's mm -hmm. like, can Star Trek survive without the Kurt crew or whatever? And mm -hmm. it's that sort of same question. Is Mass Effect viable without the Shepard? And I think that it is. Yeah. <laughs> Especially considering, <coughs> honestly, considering some of the shitters that got put out, mm -hmm. like that uh, what that No Man's Sky one, that one God. tanked horribly. You've got like Destiny, which is good, but it is the very like more the Halo shooter mm -hmm. type thing, and that's cool. But we haven't had a really definitively good s sweeping story uh, right. in space science uh, science fiction. You know, type yeah, thing. And Bioware are the ones who do that. And Bioware does it do. really good. You know, so I'm, I've got high hopes for it. I can't wait yeah. to play. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, I also saw a trailer as very like away from video games, but I also saw a trailer this week for uh, uh, the well, the second trailer for Power Rangers.
Yeah. Which actually made it look a hell of a lot more uh, promising than it did in yeah. the first trailer. <laughs> yeah. But I can tell you, I, I'm going to be my biggest complaint. Is Goldar. Is Goldar. Yeah, they it's... show him in the trailer and he looks like a fucking, what'd you call it earlier? It, was like it a... looks like a giant hook of Velveeta cheese. Yeah. Like shells and cheese. <laughs> like they're fighting a giant goldy blob th- like thing. Like it looks like you literally took a skeleton and then just <laughs> dripped hot melty cheese over it. And yeah. that's what they're fighting. It looks like he's fighting liquid gold. Yeah, liquid gold. That's literally what it, it looks like. It's kind of like that scene in Hobbit where he was fighting uh, smog when he was all covered in the liquid gold. It, yeah. Everything about it is looking pretty good, pretty decent. Like, I want to see it enough, uh, but I feel like that's the only weak part is that is the Goldar character, like, creature thing for me as far as, like, look. Now, some of the Zords from the toys I've seen I don't, don't like look it. that great, yeah. but... I don't like the Zord and I the Zords and I don't like the Megazord at all. Like I mean the you know what I'm talking about. Um I yeah. I think the coloring for the Megazord is needs work, but I mean as far as overall shape. It just looks like a random like mech from Pacific Rim or something. Like yeah. it doesn't look like something from Power Rangers to me. I mean later seasons it does. Yeah. You know. But this isn't based on, I mean, this is based on the original stuff, and the original stuff isn't remotely like that. Yeah, but that's what they didn't want to go that way. Yeah, I get that, but, like, it still, to me, needs to be reminiscent of it, at least, and it's not in the the least. Well, they don't want to do it necessarily reminiscent because it's viewed as very hokey, and this isn't supposed to not be as hokey. This is still hokey. I mean... It's still fucking hokey. To you, to other (laughs) people. Dude, come on, you can't watch a trailer and not be like, (laughs) okay, yeah, yeah. Like, it's still that level of wacky. It's still, like, wacky fucking teenagers and shit doing ninja moves and fucking, you know, karate guy suits and shit. Like, it's still that. It's just on a slicker budget and shit with more money. I don't know. To me, it looks a little bit more like Guyver type stuff and, you know, like, the suits. Don't go that far. <laughs> well, the suits. The suits are very, like, you know, that, like, Guyver kind of design, you know, that's less we're wearing spandexy and stuff like you can see reminiscence of like the original stuff but if you took like guyver and mixed it with ryan reynolds green lantern i think that's what it reminds me of too much oh uh, with the cg yeah. stuff the organic i mean and that's it's the bio every, okay that's the question that's why does it have to be organic like why does it have to organic suits like i don't fuck no it doesn't need to fucking be that like they the they say he says stuff. in the trailer like the fucking what zordon or whatever says in the trailer like they're like, you know, intergalactic race of warriors or whatever. Not mm-hmm. race of warriors, but like warrior, like like a space force or a police force or something mm-hmm. like that. They can have uniforms. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't have to fucking grow out of your dick like, or your arm or whatever the fuck, you know? I mean, it doesn't. It. It's like <laughs> watching how they transform. It's a very much more like more like nanite type, yeah. you know, biomech. I just thing. think that's an overused trope these the days. organic yeah, stuff. Yeah, I just yeah. Think it's that's, a, that's just a term. Yeah. But it is. They have a very Giver biomech looking mm-hmm. thing. It's you know a little bit more colorful, uh, but even the colors are a lot darker and muted, and you know it. Uh, it looks interesting. I like I said, I want to see the Zords in like in movement and see how they're supposed to be, you know, represented. Yeah, because like some of them look like their shapes, some of them not so. Like the Mastodon is the one that I think to me that looks like the weirdest yeah. designed one. Um, but I mean the the mega I mean as far as like the Megazord as far as movement capabilities I like the new design better than the old one I was never a fan of the original Megazord because to me it looked like a a Lego block warrior and I was like look he can barely swing a sword at people let alone punch something like if you remember the old Megazord he could do two things swing the sword and and punch. Yeah. The kicks look like the most sissy. I don't know. I just like, kickers. I like that he was bulkier and stuff. Like, I don't know. This thing just looks too slim. It reminds me a little bit of like new, like later season, um, uh, Gundams and then like original, uh, style for, uh, what is it? Uh, Neo Genesis Evangelion. Like they were a little bit more fluid mech 
type stuff they've evolved past the where like the clunky like oh domo omogato mr robot i mean i get that mess. but also like I, I also need to believe that it's like a conglomeration of different parts and stuff too like it's supposed to be you know this many creatures coming together to become a mm-hmm. thing or this many robots or whatever and it just looks like a thing it doesn't really look like it's like parts of different pieces together I it's know. too uniform i i think the toys necessarily are not a good scope of like the thing because like the toys look like they're not the most well they look done. like shit yeah they're not the most Sorry, well done so that's why i'm saying i'm like i'm waiting to see a really good shot of it in like the commercial like the trailer shows a little bit of it it doesn't show a good scope and i want to see how they come together to kind of understand because yeah with the other ones they were very voltroni like mm-hmm. look big clunky things smashing into big other clunky thing yeah. i'm like that's cool but this seems to be a little bit more of like fluid biomechanical stuff so it might be more wires and integrational stuff which if that's the case that's what it would look like more so than giant clunky uh, giant clunky i guess it just didn't really like it didn't do anything for me when i saw it yeah it didn't like because i think like the thing is like with these movies in order for me to be interested like if they're based on something from my childhood they have to evoke some level of nostalgia for me mm-hmm. and the they've done that to some level with like their suits are vaguely similar enough yeah but, like, I looked at that thing, and I'm like, if you just showed me that, I would never guess that it was from this. You know what, what I mean? Like, the... I would never, if you just showed me that Megazord, I'd be like, what's that robot from? Like, yeah. I wouldn't be like, that's from Power Rangers. Like, there's yeah. nothing about it that says Power Rangers. Yeah, it's, well, it kind of actually reminds me more of the Megazord from the the first movie. Uh, when they when they came back with the new Zords, because Tommy had the Falcon Zord, which connected mm-hmm. to the back and gave it the wings, yeah. and the way it moved, it was a lot more fluid motion. So it reminds me more of that one than it does the sh- guy in mm-hmm. the like foam suit from the TV show. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it like I said, from what the toys showed out to be, it's very hard to be like that is. A Megazord and stuff, but like I said, I haven't seen it. They like, because if you just showed me a picture of the guys in the suits, I would be like, "Oh, that's some kind of Power Rangers," because it looks like a Power yeah, Rangers. Yeah, they look like Power Rangers. But you if show you me... show me like a picture of that toy and like without the little guys with yeah. it or something, I'd be like, "It's a the robot. only two things that like that I've seen from it that do not look Power Ranger related at all." You know, as far as just from like the toys, is the Goldar and the Megazord. Those mm-hmm. are the only two things that are kind of, eh, you know. But you sh- show me Rita; she looks like an interesting version of Rita. Alpha Five definitely looks like Alpha. Zordon looks like Zordon. You know, I wouldn't more... say Rita looks like Rita. I would say she looks more like Diva Tox or something. But like, she kind of she looks me... like a, a villain. Yeah, like, yeah. but she doesn't necessarily look like Rita. She doesn't look like the f- dumpy f- house. Yeah, frown, <laughs> dumpy house frown with witchy, the giant hat. Witchy, yeah, the witchy yeah. thing. But I think bit... she looks cool. Mm-hmm. Like. And I think like she reminds I think she me, looks like a better Rita. Like I said, she reminds me of like Diva Tox or like mm-hmm. some of the later or season or Scorpino, like some of the later season villains or yeah. whatever. Like I can definitely see that. The lot more Yeah. Feminine yeah. looking ones yeah. and stuff. Because that was the thing. Like, no, Rita Repulsa didn't scare anybody. Nope. <laughs> like you thought she was gonna stick you in an oven and you could eat the house. Like mm-hmm. that's she reminded me more <laughs> of like that. And like it's nice to see them do a Rita that is actually kind of like seductive but also completely fucking psychotic like yeah. she's crazy so i i think there are some good things that i like at it and it's i liked how they did it where just being a power ranger they their bodies were enhanced to a certain yeah. degree i like that too because like they show in the show all the time like when putties show up they just kick their asses and shit and i'm like why do you even need to morph then if you can kick their asses yeah. but they never talk about them having any powers without yeah. the without morphing but in this, they're just straight up like we're enhanced. Yeah. But I assume that like they the suits make them even more. Yeah, enhanced. the suits make them yeah. more. So enhanced. The, that I actually like. Yeah, that was a definitely an, an, an add-on. And watching the trailer fluidly, it does play well. Yeah. So I'm interested. Yeah, it's just for sure. But I don't know, like if it's like, a, well, I'm gonna go see it opening weekend. Probably not. I mean, I will just because you know <laughs> it's Power Rangers, and I'm, yeah. I'm a diehard Power Ranger, so I'm gonna give it a chance. Uh, you know, I'm predicting I'm going to come out with, like, an 80%, you know, like, yay rating, possibly, like, 70 to 80. As far as, like, looks yeah. of, like, stuff that I've seen, I'm already at, like, an 80%. Uh, but, I mean, that, that was that. 
Uh, and we also saw a short trailer for a movie called Colossal, which has Anne Hathaway, who I usually hate, but um, yeah. and uh, Jason Sudeikis, yeah. which is a, a kaiju movie. But it's like the twist on it is like for some reason she controls the kaiju. Like, it's, it's a comedy. Yeah, it's like kaiju stuff is starting to become popular yeah because like marvel has their monsters unleashed where they're bringing mm. back like fing fang foom and a bunch of the big kaiju yeah creatures and they're even having their own team that go after the big kaijus so there's that uh pacific rim 2 mm-hmm. uh skull island yeah uh which there was a lot of talk with skull island because they basically said come i think 2020 they're gonna want to do the King godzilla, Kong, King Kong, 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 yeah. godzilla thing um so I mean, it is right now kind of a thing, you know. Uh, I, oh, and uh, unfortunately, in the kaiju world, we're getting a um, uh, Cloverfield three. Oh Jesus! Or yeah, the, or at least a third in that world. Uh, JJ Abrams, I swear, someone make him listen to this because I want to talk to you for a second. Mm. Stop it! Mm. No one cares. No one cared about that fifty-five thousand Cloverfield Lane or whatever the fuck that was awful. Yeah. No one cared about that. Yeah. Nobody cares about another fucking Cloverfield movie. The only reason the first one made money is because people kind of half ass thought it was going to be a Godzilla movie. Yeah. And you fucking Shanghai and tricked them. Yeah. And then it turned and out the creature to be this looks weird. like a big fucking stupid sperm monster or something. And it has like it little, sucks. little shingly mites yeah. that freak out. That movie fucking sucks. It gave sucked. people fucking like motion sickness. Yes. Thank God the shaky camera shit's over with these yeah. days. Like the shaky camera bit. Yeah. I swear to God, JJ Abrams, if you try to bring that shaky camera bullshit back, I'm gonna hunt you down and hit you and hit you in your fucking hipster glasses face. I think I think he he might have evolved from that. Well, like, let's the second fucking one hope. Didn't, yeah, let's let's hope. Um, what else? Oh, I still won't see it. Yeah, no, I, I won't either. No <laughs> interest whatsoever. But that one does look funny because it is one of those like I guess there is a kaiju watcher that is attacking like korea and different things it, it i guess it turns out to be her but it's like at first it's her when she's drunk and unconscious mm-hmm. or so you know like in a subconscious type of way but then eventually like you find out it's her and she's like doing goofy shit like yeah. when she realizes she's like moving very and then once she finds it there's like a thing where it's attacking a town and jason sudeikis is watching it on the tablet and it's like what's it doing and she's like Jason's like it's dancing and she's like it's dancing like this and then he realizes that she's dancing yeah. the same way as the kaiju and shit and it's it looks I, like fun it looks like a funny poke at it yeah you know so I'm okay with it and the, the creature looks funny looking it is kind of wacky it, it, looking it yeah. kind of wacky looking so uh, that one looks like it could be fun yeah uh what was it oh uh video game back to that mm-hmm. um Square Enix and Marvel announced that they're going to do uh, a bunch of games. <laughs> he says that because he hears Square Enix and he thinks it's automatically going to be anime. It will. You think this, but it's not. They might not call it anime, but it'll still look like anime. Every Square Enix thing I've ever seen still looks like anime to me. That's because you broad scope anime. So, I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's to be expected. Uh, but... I don't know if it's going to be anime. I highly doubt it necessarily. It's probably just they're going to be using, like you know, like you would go to Bioware to create your game. You give me so, an example of something that Square Enix that doesn't look like anime. Uh, like a, a bunch of their recent games didn't look Such like as? anime. Uh, Deuce X, Final Fantasy, this new one. Final than, Fantasy doesn't look like anime to you. Other than their hair, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. You think anything that's Asian is anime? No, like, I oh, don't. it's Oriental, it's anime. <laughs> that's Shit. not true. Really? Because it's I'm... fucking Final Fantasy. Of course, it's anime. No, it's not. Oh, Jesus Christ! Again, broad spinning. I think that you were just like in denial of what it is. Uh, okay, but anyways, yeah. Go ahead, look it up. No, I'm gonna look it up because yeah. I guarantee I'm looking at go. That looks like anime because you're broad scoping. <laughs> oh my God! Look at it. It's so anime. It's a white guy with hair made by an Asian company. It must be anime. Nah. Yep. Oh, yep. Is it? Not yep. exactly, uh, but I can yeah. see the influence. Uh-huh. Like, the influence is definitely Because his hair is crazy? No, nah, it's just like the shape of the faces and stuff, and then that definitely looks something like out of an anime. I don't even know if that's from the game. 
Yeah, I just think there's definitely facial structure things there. But, well, it's it's not anime per se, but there's definitely influence there. Uh-huh. Again, broad scoping. Um, oh, blow me. <laughs> you just hate the fact that I hate anime so bad. <laughs> no, I hate the fact that you lump in everything as anime. I'm not it's, lumping. I'm just saying it looks like, dude, fucking everything that I can think of that I've seen from them, other than this one thing I just looked at, uh, looks like fucking anime. Okay. I've seen their versions of Marvel characters before when they've done the fucking, like, artwork and stuff, and it all looks like anime. I think what it's going to look like, it's going to look like the figures, like the Kai figures. Which, those look very anime-esque. Mm, I disagree I don't. on that one. Like, maybe, like, the females, because they give them, like, the big doughy eyes and stuff, but, I mean, I don't think those look truly anime-ish. Uh, but they announced they're going to do... Uh, I think it's like a series of games, like Avengers game. Like I saw a trailer, like a teaser trailer, where it's like uh, kind of like the Avengers has gotten their ass kicked and they need to like reassemble or some shit. So it's gonna look in the scope probably like Dusex and the latest Final Fantasies, where they're more like the realistic CG, uh, like the CGI type stuff. So it should be interesting. I mean, it's possible. Like the like I said the the Kai arts things would be a good basis for what their design was. Cause those were the square Enix people that were doing the designs for yeah. them. But I mean, I it doesn't know. do anything for me aesthetically like, well, yeah. at all. Like whether you want to say it looks like anime or not, like you can say it doesn't look like anime. Like, we'll just say it this way. I don't like the square Enix aesthetic. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> it's weird. Mm-hmm. Like, and then they're like, their quote unquote realistic CG does not look all that realistic. It's like that weird. It's a little too weird looking. Nobody's face is that pointy. <laughs> they draw angular things. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's, you know, it's still pretty. I'm realistic. sure people are excited about it. It's not yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else game wise that came like was talking about coming out? I don't remember. I don't think I have seen anything yeah, personal. I don't, I don't remember too much. I think those were like the two biggest things that were supposed to be coming out. So yeah, the the other big well, not necessarily. I don't know how you consider this a big thing or not, but it's definitely, I guess, like in the geek community, it's something that's related, especially because there's a lot of. We, especially considering our conversation last week about like what's going to break the bubble as far as movies and stuff go, uh-huh. this makes me think of what's going to break the bubble TV wise, and that's Powerless. Powerless is premiering February fourth, and Powerless. I we saw a trailer for it a long time ago yeah. because this has been in development for like over a year yeah, now, it's... and they've already shot one whole trailer, and I think uh, not trailer, but one whole pilot, and then possibly uh, one or two episodes, mm-hmm. and then went back and reshot like ninety percent of it, yeah, because it didn't test well. Yeah, they um, went back and changed the entire premise. Yeah, originally it was supposed to be like uh, Vanessa, what's going. her name. Hudgens, Hudgens works it for an insurance company in like the world of DC, mm-hmm. basically, and though and for some reason that just like <laughs> petered on the yeah. fucking test because they tried to make something it looked like like in the vein of The Office or something yeah. like that, like that sort of sitcom, and it looks like that <laughs> Peter fucking yeah. bomb there. So then they went back and reshot it as a more traditional comedy. Yeah, like now instead of like an insurance agency, they work at Wayne and Gotham or Wayne Industries, Wayne yeah. Industries, like Wayne Securities stuff. And it's everyone's playing basically their same characters. It's yeah. just in a different setting, but instead of being you know the um, insurance stuff, they basically work in an R and D for Wayne where they or develop gadgetry, gadgetry and stuff. To, but it's for like the everyday man mm-hmm. type stuff. So it's more of a what's the one show you were telling me? It's better off Ted, better off Ted, or like or, uh, the show that um, uh, Fred Savage did years ago called Working. Like yeah. it's, it, it bears similarity to both of those. Yeah, it's kind of heavy similarity to Better Off Ted if you've watched oh, that yeah. before. Yeah, it's definitely more of that, mm-hmm. and I think I guess it tested a lot better probably because. I still am dubious as to whether it'll do anything. Yeah. It's because they, it looks more interesting to me now. Like it looks funnier and like I would actually be in, cause I can tell you when I saw the first stuff from the first pilot, I had zero interest in seeing it. Like literally none. Yeah. And then this one, I watched the trailer and I'm like, okay, well that looks like it could be a fun kind of thing, but it also looks like it might, they'll be lucky if they get a season out of it. Yeah. And maybe we never know because Community got a couple seasons, so yeah, it did. But it also like bounced from two networks and like had a strong sort of following as yeah. far as fan base and had some people that you know really like. It's got Alan Tudyk, and I love Alan Tudyk, 
and it's got Vanessa Hutchins and that one guy that was on fucking Community. Community. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't see it being grabbing that rabid, you know, sort of thing or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. But I, as far as like breaking the bubble, I think because of what it is, because it's a comedy, yeah. nobody ex- expects much from it. So yeah. I don't know if it will be a bubble popper. Well, as far I don't think it will necessarily break the bubble, but I also think it would be like one of the first like big su- superhero related things to do nothing. I mean, if that bubble hasn't popped because the agents of shield then <laughs> shield's still going three seasons in that's the thing like there's a difference between shields ratings are low in their third or fourth season yeah. to like this show maybe lasting five episodes yeah. you know but i mean that's the thing the hopes for what agents of shield was supposed to be versus what yeah. we got was drastically different and even in that show they had to literally drastically change things at the beginning of the first season to even keep the momentum going yeah. into a second season Second season was not bad, and then right now their ratings are really kind of shit. <laughs> and we've like, exhaustively talked about that. Yeah. But yeah. So I don't know. It's and then they've got another potential show coming out. Marvel has got another network show potentially coming out that they're supposed to be announcing here in like a week or two, and nobody knows what the fuck it is because the other show that they were gonna do with. Um, uh, what was it Hunter and yeah. what's her face? That guy that died. Shit, that died. So nobody knows, and it's not a Netflix show. So oh I would man. hope that they're smart enough to not try to spin something off of Agents of Shield at this point because you're spinning off a show that is tanking in the ratings makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is like whatever they do, what are they going to connect it to? Because are they going to connect it to the movies? Because that's kind of a... Uh, I hate to say it, but that's not really a strong thing to nope. do these days because but they've showcased... you've also got uh, Fox is doing that Legion show. And then there's another Marvel show that's happening in development right now. Well, there's the other X-Men show. X-Men show, yeah, yeah that's happening in development now. Yeah. And that's that's a, that's starting to crowd TV with a lot of superhero properties yeah. or a lot of you know comic related properties, yeah. and usually when that happens, yeah. shit starts dying. Yeah, and like there was even talk about they're potentially like Jeff John said, mm-hmm. that like I, has that even come out? Has and he said anything? Nothing more nothing's been said yet. Yeah. You know, then there's the uh, the Constantine animated. Which mm-hmm. is going to be, but that's on the seed. So I mean, yeah, that's that kind of really yeah, yeah, that doesn't really count to a certain degree. We've got season three of Young Justice coming out on mm-hmm. Netflix. It's like, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah, but there's also a lot of stuff leaving. Like Game mm-hmm. of Thrones, this is their last supposedly last season this mm-hmm. year. That's a huge like thing that's going to end up going away. Which they're talking about possibly spinning something off from that show. Uh, Vikings is still going, but you know spoilers if you guys haven't been watching and stuff they just killed the main fucking character like a couple Mm. episodes ago so it's gonna be like how strong is the show without ragnar you know uh what else there's a couple other stuff agents of shields looking like it may or may not get another season all the cw shows are already already, renewed already renewed i ain't heard shit about shield getting renewed. shields on the bubble yeah and it's not looking good it's not looking good so i mean there's stuff, Diane. Uh, Gotham and Lucifer, I guess, are still doing strong, but I guess Gotham is having a little bit of like a little bit of blowback from the like uh, the Joker thing because they brought in that kid who was supposed to the Jerome kid who was supposed to be Joker, and they went straight into him having the face, the the sewn on mm-hmm. face thing, and I guess some people really were really yeah, good lord. And he like kidnaps Bruce. Oh, good lord. That's what I'm saying. They're like. This show is so fucking goddamn convoluted. It's like, mm. but it's, <laughs> I saw a thing where they're like, oh, people should thank Gotham for adding to the Batman mythos. And I was like, no, no, this is like no. Batman on like. Hey, whoever said that, crack. get banned. Yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> I don't I don't take anything that happens on Gotham to be connected to anything Batman related because it's so fucking out there. But it is, like you said, there's a lot of stuff coming out. But yeah. also, though. The landscape, like we said, is changing. There's becoming mm. so many now, you know, streaming services. Each channel wants to have its own streaming service and shit, which I think mm. that bubble's going to eventually pop because nobody's going to keep paying $8 for this one, $8 no. for the, $10 for that one, you know, yeah, things like that, like just to watch a single show. Nope. You know, 
So, I mean, I don't know. But this week was, you know, DC shows and yep, the Agents return of, of the DC shows. Don't care about Shield. Yeah, <laughs> stop I, giving a fuck. This dude. is how far I, my the Shield has fallen. I actually took it off of my series manager yeah. to DVR. Like I just no, yeah. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I just done. I've right. got. I, I erased think so. all the yeah, last think, ones. Yeah, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, I replaced they, it with this the season. Petitions. Officially killed my interest in the show. Yeah, and like, it's all that Ghost Rider shit. For me, it was not Ghost Rider itself. It was the fact that they chose to try and run Ghost Rider along with something <laughs> that was still going from last <coughs> season, and it was just two things butting heads. It was like it should have been one or the other. Yeah, like. If you were going to do Ghost Rider, it should have just been all yeah. supernatural based and that's it. But then or you should have just completely finished what you were going to do with the Inhuman story and then went to Ghost Rider. Like yeah. it was trying to run two stories at the same time that divided everything about the show. I feel the like show. they tried to change themselves to be darker and more gritty or whatever, mm-hmm. and that just killed what I liked about the show. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And I'm apparently not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> the ratings are any indication. Because mm-hmm. now they're starting to go into other things so quickly, because like, the mm-hmm. Inhuman shit's still going on, but now they're introducing the life model decoy stuff which is yeah. becoming a huge story so it's like fuck dude can you run just a, a solid story and finish it before you start trying to because yep. now you got the life model decoys trying to get the the supernatural book oh, while the inhuman shit's going on I'm like now you're convoluting three different yeah. things into one and it's I can't, I'm just so disinterested it's ridiculous yeah but the DC shows came back this week, and came they back. they all came back strong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't really say which one. I don't know. I'm trying to think of which one I would think was the strongest of the of the uh, group. I, for me, I'm gonna go with Legends. Wow, I actually had that dead last. Really? Yeah, because the George Lucas shit was just goofy. I mean that, but I mean for me, like yeah, the George Lucas stuff was kind of goofy. It was that thing was I, I, we talked about before when I talked yeah. about the shit you shouldn't do in time travel yeah. shows. <laughs> I mean that part was goofy, but it was the interpersonal stuff is what I liked. Yeah, that was good. It I was, just like yeah. I don't know the overall thing. I was just like, mm, yeah, yeah. That it was, was a good episode. It was fun yeah. to watch, but it's just like that was exactly what I said. You should not fucking do in these shows. For me, it was the most fun because. I don't know. The problem was both Arrow and Flash suffered from too much angsty bullshit in there. Like, well, I actually have Supergirl as my number one this week. Supergirl was, yeah, that one was pretty solid. That, I feel like Supergirl was the strongest show of the week. It did interpersonal stuff well. It's, it, it advanced her sister storyline, which I loved quite a bit. And there was a roughly, lot of good stuff there. Roughly. Now I understand. You know what? I agree with how it was done. Like I, I understand why it was done that way, and I get it. And I, like, I do too. But it was just one of those like, bam! I was like, oh wow, okay, that's a level of crazy right there. That it's like it's, and I understand why she's that crazy. Yeah. But it's one of those things where it's like, you've never really showcased that level of crazy. Like this was a whole new level of yeah. crazy that it was like, uh, okay, I think it. It's definitely a solid number two for me because, like, going back and watching them all multiple times, I had more fun watching Legends multiple times than I did Supergirl, like, multiple times. It was really good the first time, but watching it over and over again, just Legends was one, for me, more fun enough to watch over and over again. But, yeah, like, I just, I wouldn't care to watch it again. But, I mean, it, it's Kevin, so, you know, you love Kevin. Well, you know what has nothing to do with that? Because I honestly say, like, of all the Kevin stuff that he's done in this universe so far, yeah. like the Flash episodes and everything, this is the least Kevin-y of all of it. Yeah. Like, there was, like, two jokes in the whole show that I thought were Kevin-y jokes. And then, you know, and his daughter. Well, I mean, like, she was just, she could have inserted any random actress into that. And that's what it matter. basically was. He was yeah. like, hey, I have a 17-year-old. Could yeah. she be in the show? And that's like, that I was cool that. that she was there or whatever. Yeah. But the only thing that was kevin about it, the whole thing was the one joke at the very end of the show. Yeah. That, like, uh, Alex and her girlfriend have with each other about care about Kara yeah and the glasses and the glasses that's the there. Kevin joke yeah. that's a, that's a straight up Kevin joke but there was nothing else about the episode that really screamed Kevin like when he does the flash episodes mm-hmm. it feels like he's doing them yeah this one was weird it was like it didn't feel very Kevin-y yeah 
Like the only other thing I would say that was the only other thing was like when um, there's a there's a part where Wind is like dancing around or whatever yeah. and like singing stuff. that felt very Kevin like. Yeah, felt very Kevin. I guess like for me, Supergirl was good, but there was there was just some the things about it that were you know. I don't know, lost in translation for me, I guess. I guess. Um, Flash? I enjoyed Flash. Flash was good. There was some things there that were t- t- tropes that they go back to a little too much. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like this constant fucking, you know, cock teasing of fucking Wally West finally becoming Kid Flash, you know, and like, Finally. Yeah, that, I agree with that one. The one I was going to mention was, like, can we just give up on, like, Barry can't tell somebody the truth? Like, Jesus Christ, stop it. Yeah. I'm tired of Barry can't fucking tell the truth. Because that's not a very Barry thing. Like, yeah. in the beginning, that was not a Barry, like, attribute. That was something, that's a more Oliver. Barry keeping shit from people needs to be done. That's an Oliver thing. Yeah. Like, and I hate to say it, like, I mean, you know, and Oliver does it better. Yeah. Like... He, he's, well, it makes more fucking sense yeah, when he does it, it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense when Barry does it because Barry was always the more optimistic, yeah. up front, like, things will be better and shit. And it seems like now he's fuck things up. It's basically like Flashpoint fucks shit up so bad that he has, like, fucking failure to launch problem mm-hmm. where he just can't tell people what's yeah. going to happen. I also, I, I'm done with Tom Felton. Like, it's nothing personally with him. Yeah. I just don't care about that character at all. It served its purpose. Yeah. It does not need to become part of the team. I'm I have no fucks about that. I understand why he's coming part of the team. Because I they don't... have to they have this desire to fucking make everybody a part of the team. Well, <laughs> that and like really, if if she can't figure it out, who's gonna figure it out? Yeah. Because you don't have the smart Harrison Wells anymore. No, but you basically are getting Barry version two with no powers and more of a douchebag. Because Barry is already forensically... He's the same level of forensic as that guy. They're all experts on metahumans at this point. No, he, like, from <laughs> how they basically put it, like, Barry's nowhere near his level of, like, stuff. I didn't read that at all. Oh, watching the past few episodes, they basically did it. Like, they're, when it came to, like, the metahuman stuff, Barry is a good CSI, but he's, like, a regular CSI. He's good at being a regular CSI. The Felton character is, like, because he's so specifically trained on metahumans that, like, there are things that he knows to look for that Barry doesn't. It's just basically, like, he's a different class yeah. of CSI. So, I mean, he I kind of know. fits that. He's, like, a half Barry, half Caitlin kind of character. And I could see why they would have him in it for a short while, but I don't see his character lasting in the team. I hope not. You know, yeah, because he's... I don't think he's going to. No. Um, I don't... The And that was the other thing, was the Caitlyn stuff. Like, at first when they made those bands for her, mm. it was like, oh, these are good, we got you solid, and now it's like, all of a sudden, now she's like, they're turned into, uh, I forgot to charge my iPod type thing. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> If these are the only thing that are keeping her from becoming yeah, and a you're psychopath, that worried about it, yeah. you'd be charging these things vociferously. You'd be like having like those uh, what do you call them power banks like strapped to your arms, yeah, which she like, did. She didn't pull one out, but it was like, when the fuck did that become a deep like <laughs> like come on, Cisco? Yeah. Like really? Like you're better at this. Like, Put some sort of battery in there that doesn't need to be charged very often. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Or something like that. These are supposed to, like, negate people's powers, and you're like, oh, shit, I I left this app on, and it's drained my fucking powers. Like, what the fuck is that, dude? Like, that's... That annoyed me a little bit. And then there was, like, the Cisco... Harrison Wells thing, like that's the that's the Cisco other thing. Cisco was like a douche in this episode. And, yeah, he was a pretty. And the thing is, it's like two steps, like one step forward with this, three steps back. It's like it seems like they finally start to trust him or be like okay. And then all of a sudden, some he comes up with an idea, and yes. they're like, "Fuck you, you're not smart." And you they're can't suffering do from shit. that problem that Legends had in the first season, where like they would all be happy in the end of the episode, and the next episode they're all pissed off at each other again. Yeah, and I'm like. Stop it. Yeah. You're all schizophrenic. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, like, for me, that was a lot of problems. And then, like, with the Kid Flash stuff, too. Yeah. Because 
I want to know too what happened because last time I had remembered they're okay with it <laughs> well there was he was training with Harrison like Harrison yeah. was helping him to become Kid Flash because nobody else wanted to then all of a sudden bam we're in this episode and now something happened that now he's shadowing Barry I'm like when did this discussion happen when did this agreement yeah. fucking show up it's it was a very disjointed episode to me it was good but there was angsty bullshit that didn't need to happen like I can understand why you'd be like okay Kid Flash is angsty you yeah. know like, or like it annoys you and it, it is it's <laughs> stupid angsty bullshit but at the same time from what I've seen I feel, I feel like he's completely justified in like the angst of like fuck you guys like you keep dangling the carrot of like yeah oh you could be a superhero oh no you could be a superhero oh, no 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 yeah and it's like Jesus Christ I was like stop it I don't care now yeah and then that was kind of a little bit of my issue with Arrow this week was the same thing it was like there was I mean but it was like I understand why Felicity would be upset and yeah. why she is in the mindset that she is but they just brought it out of her in a very it was it was bitchy, a weird way yeah kind of hooker way it was a very Lana-esque way that you know I don't want to go that far, I mean, but yeah. like the, the the randomly oh now she's a bitch for some reason you know like well you know what though I feel like I understand it to an extent because Oliver was being a dick like not a dick like he's mean but like he's being a dipshit because, like, he's just so fucking overwroughtly emotional about Laurel and, like, so guilt-ridden and shit that he just so wants to believe that this fucking obviously not Laurel is Laurel, like... But that's the thing, though. And, the, oh, I just want to believe so hard that there's good in her, but that's not really Oliver's nature to do that, though. Because fucking he never is the one who's like, oh, I believe there's good in you, like, no, no, he's not that guy. And that's the thing, though, but he even said that, like, she's mad thinking that's what he's doing, but at the same time, he's, like, standing there being like, I'm not that fucking made of a moron. Like, I know she's not our Laurel. I know she's probably going to do stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to work her to get information while also still yeah. see... Yeah, see, I, be I don't believe him when he says that, though. Like, this is not... You, his actions do not belay that. But that that was the thing, though. His actions... He didn't really do anything. All he did was he didn't beat the shit out of her one time, and then he shows up the second time Dude, to try and get Dude, think about it. If it was like, if like Detective What's His Nuts fucking fucko boyfriend or whatever magically showed back up and was alive, do you think that he would have acted the same way? No. He'd have been like, bullshit! You're bullshit! Bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. Because fucking that's Oliver. But because it's Laurel and looks like Laurel, he could go, oh, soft in the fucking but trousers it, and shit. Yeah. But no. it, also, she did unfortunately lay a semi I'm gonna say semi plausible in the Do very you think, thinnest seriously though after the crossover when Sarah is still all fucked up about Laurel and in front of Oliver and shit that's not a plot hole no well that's what I'm saying like she basically that was the thing where it was like it was just plausible enough in the like the moment of like holy fuck you're still only here. because Oliver is fucking soft in the trousers about it and shit. Well, yeah, he, that's that, the they, only they reason he could said, believe that. Yeah, they said the blinders and stuff. Yeah. It makes sense, but he's also he was still like. But I feel like that's why like it makes sense that Felicity was like, no, I need to step the fuck up and be like, no, don't listen to what he's saying because mm -hmm. he's not thinking with his right head right now. Yeah, but she also to me endangered like shit she did too. and she says it. Like, yeah, she admits that she yeah. did twice. Like that was the thing, and so it was basically them both coping in ways that yeah. conflicted with each she's other. She's also grieving too and yeah. like so her emotions are just all over the place. Yeah. That's to me honestly why I would have stepped in and been like Felicity I need you to hand over the keyboard like I'm gonna need you to step off the yeah. keyboard like you're a little. You but know. I think that unfortunately because of this like really both of themselves needed to divorce both of them needed to divorce themselves from that situation because yeah. Oliver could not make the right decision in that situation and she was way too emotional. Yeah. I mean I'm not going to say he couldn't make the right decision. I just didn't... To me, I didn't see him make any bad decisions necessarily. Like... I think she led... I think she cut it off before he could make bad decisions. I think she preemptively thinking he was going to before uh, it would actually happen. I have happened. to say I agree with what she did. Like I disagree with what she did. Honestly... I'd have laid the smack down on her verbally. Like, I'd have chewed her ass out and told her to get out of my cave. Uh, but that's, yeah, I that's me. I mean... You know she's just going so hate and he's trying to be something different but I mean there was that then there was the Holt stuff and uh with Wild Dog 
Yeah, that was actually much more interesting. That was yeah, that was actually more interesting. Uh, I like their interpersonal reactions. Uh, the stuff with Diggle and the lawyer guy, who we're pretty sure is I'm pretty sure he's really vigilante, vigilante yeah. and stuff, was actually pretty cool. That would you know, it was, yeah. it was interesting to see that dynamic. Um, I mean, there was some good action. I will go ahead and openly say Katie Cassidy plays a better villain than she, like, better Black Siren than she does a Black Canary. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say I never need to see Katie Cassidy on my television again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I mean, but, but you're like, right. If she, if they bring her back but as I still Black Siren, yeah, she is way better at playing the catty evil. I agree. Version, but it is one of those like, yeah, if you bring her back like one or two more times, that's fine. But like, you know, within the scope of the series, she doesn't need to come to back. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to see her on a regular basis as a bad guy again. Um, Man, if she could have been okay, like you know what? If she could have been a character that was never like Black Canary adjacent or whatever, like if she's just been like a character, any other name, something that was not like a hero, mm -hmm. she would have been fine as a character, like Oliver's girlfriend or whatever, yeah. like that he cheated on with like the actual Black Canary, whatever. Like she could have been, it could have been opposite. Like she could have been the sister and never have actually became anything. Yeah, that to be that like <laughs> as far as like her skills. Not great, no. But I think ultimately it falls less on her and less on how fucking awesome Katie Lotz is. And That's they part made, of it. And they made her Black Canary first. That's and part of it. She was the quintessential Black Canary. That's and part then of you're it. like, hey, here's B plus, or well, here's here's B minus, here's F minus. <laughs> here's like, here's a know. fucking like, here's Alicia Silverstone Batgirl, yeah. like. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm gonna go ahead and go on record as saying that that's that's about equally fucking how lame I feel yeah, like Katie problem, Cassidy yeah, is. But the only problem with saying bringing that up is, well, then who's the Katie Lots bad girl? No, they Who never you, made one. That's what I'm saying. It's hard to just. No, I'm just saying it sucks there. equally. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, mm, damn, it's hard. It's like it's being know. like, uh, you know, we gave you fucking like cool Ben Affleck Batman like. Uh, it's like here's okay. fucking like to me. It's like this. Shh. Katie Lotz is CW Supergirl. Like, yeah. the new Supergirl. Katie Lotz is, like, Vandervoot Supergirl. Yeah. She pass She was passable for the part. She no, I wouldn't even go that far, because I don't think Katie Cassidy was even passable as, as fucking Black and Airy. I mean, but it was, like, at the time... No. That was Supergirl, where you're like, <laughs> okay, I guess that's Supergirl. And then this one, I'm like, I guess you could say that she's Black Canary in the least of terms. In no know? terms, it was just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was the lame duckest of lame ducks. Like Again, to you. Until she put the suit on, I had no problem with Laurel as a character whatsoever. Yeah. The second she became Black Canary, I was like, eh, done, I'm out, I'm was out. It, was it because of her acting or her fighting capabilities? It's both. Because she became much more irritating as a character after that. Yeah. The way they started writing her, horrible. Because she wasn't, like... And she cannot fight her way out of a wet paper bag. No, she can't. Oh, my God. Honey, <laughs> you're a beautiful Katie Cassie. You're a beautiful girl. And you are a decent actress. You can't fight. Please stop trying. Please, yeah. God, stop trying. I, I, I just... <laughs> I'm trying to think what's the best way to say it. Be watching her fight is... It's like half pace. Like, her fighting is it's always, like... watching like, Steven Seagal. Like, <laughs> not young Steven no, Seagal. Old, old, fat, uh, old Steven Seagal. No, old, fat, black hair dye Steven Seagal. <laughs> like, half pace, speed. There's some uh, movie where, uh, like, he's, like, sitting at a table, fat eating or whatever, and, like, fighting off a dude without getting up. Yeah. That's what, Kay, that's what Katie Cassidy is in Black Canary. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas you got, like, Katie Locks, who is fucking, like... <laughs> You well, know. you got to compare to everyone else on the show who can actually fight. It right, looks yeah. believable. Le like she sticks out like the fucking sorest of thumbs. I mean, even Thea. Like you look at Thea, and Thea can yeah. fight. But uh, Willa Holland can fucking yeah. go. You know, like, yes, I'm like, like oh my god, Katie. I'm sorry. It's like everybody else is like Olympic decathletes, and she's the special <laughs> Olympian. Yeah, somebody like, gave that girl a white belt. Like. She's the fucking special <laughs> Olympian. Like. No, stop it. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, Katie Lutz is fucking like Flojo, and she's <laughs> Special Olympian. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Katie Lutz is original season Power Rangers. Yeah. Katie Cassidy's like that one girl that's like, I think she's I know like, how to fight. 
She's like Howdy tattooed ha. teenage alien yeah, fighters from Beverly yeah. Hills. Like, he ha ha ha. Like, nope. Sorry, a little slow. Uh, so like, bad. wait, no, one more. So like, Katie Lots is like, <laughs> Katie Lots is like original 1950s awesome dragnet, and then like <laughs> Cassidy is like Dan Aykroyd, Tom, <laughs> fucking uh, shit. What's his nuts? Uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah, <laughs> the dragnet. Like that's wait. So that one's supposed to be the worst one? <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> I've watched them both, and I'll prefer the Dan Aykroyd, Tom <laughs> Hanks dragnet. Because oh, it's god. just more fun to watch. Oh god. She's the Superman three of. <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's rough. Uh, but we no longer have to worry about that because at the end of this episode, yeah, spoilers she got beat like yeah, a wet fart. Bat, like a wet, Felicity <laughs> sucker punch her ass. But <laughs> they actually do show the what is assumed to be the new Black Canary. Yeah, some chick who's got Canary cry powers. Yeah, on ours. So she is probably, I don't know, she's from Hub City, so we'll have to find out where the origins of the Canary Cry, if it was something to do with Flash's whole thing. She's or, some sort of meta, it looks like. Or if she was just a meta from mm. like one of the other ways. Because they finally started showcasing here in the last like season or two mm-hmm. that metas have been showing up from other places, not from just yeah. the uh, particle uh, explosion. But, I mean, overall... They were all they were all pretty good. I'm tired a little bit more about Legends because we didn't really talk about it very much. Like I just talked about the fact mm-hmm. I hate the George Lucas shit, but yeah. like, okay, <sighs> this is just not. I don't know. There's something about this episode that just does not connect with me. Like it was it was fun to watch. Like mm-hmm. uh, their fight stuff's always good. Yeah, and like all the stuff with Damian Dark and uh, and Malcolm is really good. Like they I just love it. those two on screen. Yeah. Especially also Neil when you McDonough get McDonough guy... and fucking um, shit, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Merlin. Um, God damn it, John Barrowman. John Barrowman, yeah, brilliant, both of them. Yeah, brilliant and great. And then when you parts. add the guy who plays Thawne in too, yeah, he's pretty good too. He's really he's good, good too. too. But, but yeah, those two together, it's just it's so smooth, so fluid, and you like. You don't know whether you want to be like, God, I love you guys, or God, you scare the shit out of me yeah. because you're just that fucking evil. Let's like, talk about, like, at a, at a show that has all this effects budget and, like, has all these cool effects, has all these cool costumes and stuff, you can't find a wig or two wigs that actually look like hair. Because <laughs> the one they stuck on Rip Hunter was one of the worst fucking wigs I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And that beard that was on quote-unquote George Lucas looked like they literally went to, like, Party City and bought it <laughs> and, like, duct taped it to his they face. Did not, those that did not look good. was fucking ridiculous. That did not look great. That did not belong on a network television show. I want to pull up a picture of George <laughs> Lucas from the 70s and see if that's what he looked like. Like, if it was that, like, in his college days and see if it was that <laughs> He did have a very jet black beard yeah. and, like, had, like, fucking curly hair and shit, but, like, this dude did not look remotely like George Lucas. Yeah. Nor did he look remotely like he ever grew a beard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, like, I don't know, like, the whole George Lucas thing, like, if you guys watch it, like, some people probably dig it. Like, I, I think it's clever. The storyline is clever. Because like, it's, it's such tied into Palmer and Nate. Yeah, uh, it's, and it's tied into, like, that basically, like, Palmer and Nate don't become heroes because they didn't have Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars, basically, yeah. because they didn't get inspired. And I like that. I like the... The thought that, like, you know, it's inspired by mm-hmm. things or whatever, and that does change the course of things. And, like, yeah. it's, you know, it's just another way for Star Wars geeks to make Star Wars more important than it is. <laughs> and I would have done the same thing with Star Trek, so I'm not going to lie. What was it Like, it, it would have been I was going to say, you got same. Star Trek references in fucking Supergirl. Yes, so, I do. Like, and it's awesome. And Stargate. And Stargate, yes. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's that thing I said, like, you shouldn't do with time travel shows that involve too many fucking, like, hokey stories with uh you know actual people from time and stuff like it just you can do it the right way but it needs to be like in little doses or whatever and they this one was just a little bit too far into it It wasn't horrible or anything like that obviously but yeah the uh, the wig thing was killing me and the fucking beard was killing me but i i understand why they did it because it's that thing of like where they just wanted to have that childlike, you know like oh as a child these things inspired me (laughs) i'm also hoping now that like th- this is not the resolution of Mick seeing fucking Captain Cold because if it is that's lame as fuck what the resolution of like cause like you know the, he goes to the professor for help or whatever mm-hmm. and like 
He's like, oh, there's a thing in your brain that they put in there as, you know, when you were the fucking bounty hunter yeah. and shit. And he takes it out. And he's like, well, actually, that thing wasn't working. The reason that you were seeing him is because, like, it's your it's your your mind, like, playing tricks on you and trying to, like, say, like, these are your doubts or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, please let it be something more than that, because that's kind of, like, an anticlimactic sort of fucking way well, to do it. and that's the thing, because, like, when they pulled out the thing and it said it hadn't been active for yeah. so long, and then he's like, oh, well, it's your conscience and stuff, you know, that type of... Like, that was supposed to be the, like, oh, okay, it's the... Resolution. I hope so. You know, it's supposed yeah. to be, like, the oh, like, this is the resolution, but you know, based off any of these shows, it's not the actual I resolution. hope so. I really do Because hope so. why would you sign the deal for him to come back, like, show back For up something that fucking For light. something like yeah. that. No, there's something. something I hope Something is so. fucking I, I, I believe that it's probably true. Like, I hope so. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things where it was, like, it's supposed to be the quick patch-up fix... Mm-hmm. But then you're going to find out there's a bigger problem. Yeah. You know, and like they even said, he's technically, based off what their theories are, he's a time ghost because he died in the time thing and that all fucking went boom, bam, bing. So, you know. Yeah, I just I like know. that's actually a more interesting thought process or whatever than like, oh, it's just your conscience talking to you. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> I think, you no, know, I think that's Stein's. Yeah thing is because one he even told him he's like i'm not a fucking, not a psych- fucking psychologist. psychologist like because yeah. i'm doctor doesn't mean i'm the doctor of every fucking thing in the world like they kind of <laughs> go to him as like the end all be all like oh you're a doctor you're a doctor of everything and he's like no that's yeah, not how this yeah, i'm a doctor of thugonomics motherfucker yeah like, like <laughs> i'm a doctor what? of a specific <laughs> type of science and you assholes are just generalizing because i have a doctor i'm not trying from, to say yeah that. like <laughs> what the fuck nah. so i think it's one of those we're this is gonna be a very nope that was wrong that was very wrong type of situation <laughs> yeah i because, hope so i do yeah and they need to find a way to deal with zoom or i mean reverse flash yeah because he's just smoking the shit out just, of all of them yeah i'm just eating their fucking lunch yeah <laughs> which to me makes i don't know there are some probability problems i have with that because it was like okay look what flash had to do to be able to knock out girder Mm. He literally had to go, like, mm. and do this super fucking punch just to do it. But you're telling me a reverse flash can just, like, hey, what's up, uh, Steel? Pink! Beat you. Like, punched you, and I'm like, mm, that, no. You could also argue, argue that, like, Thawne is much more advanced in his ability to use the speed force than Barry was at the time he fought Girder. Well, what, by far. But that's the, that's the other problem, too, is we don't know where in the timeline we're getting Thawne. Like, is mm-hmm. he in the beginning of his career? Like, earlier? Is he... Is his... No, he's from the time period where he killed Barry's mother. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, he, he went back, so is it like... There's a whole scope of, like, where, how strong he's got. Because, like, when he finally fought... I don't know. Like, the, to me, they've already shown that he's more advanced than Barry just from the stuff he's done yeah, so far. Yeah, just more advanced. But it's, like, how advanced are we? Are we, yeah. like, where after... Well, I'm saying he's certainly tachyon. more advanced than Barry was when he fought yeah. season, in season one when he fights yeah. Girder. Like, it's very early on. But, I mean, even then, there's that's still just... That's not yeah. advanced. That's just physics. He has to be so far away to do the super punch. Yeah. Speed-wise. So... I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, until you find a way to deal with his speed, those three are just going to smoke the shit out of the six of you. Like, yeah. like you can kick the crap out of Merlin and Dark, but the moment Thawn shows up, he owns the entire team. Yeah. And it's like, God damn, there's got to be something. So. Well, that was the DC TV for the week. It was good overall, I would say. Yeah. Um, same. The only issues that are there, are the same issues that are always there with these sort of shows. It's like and they pop up from time to time. Yeah, yeah, they pop up from time to time. Um, but they're still good shows, and they're still yeah. worth watching. I haven't got to watch any. Like I've watched on and on, off and on of Lucifer this season, and it's good. It's just one of those things I constantly forget what day it's on, so it's like shit, you know. Yeah. But I'll have to start um, recording it. Cassette, yeah. That one is a really good one. Uh, Gotham can burn in hell. Yep. Um, <laughs> New season of Face Off just started. Everybody should watch that. Oh it's yeah, awesome. that was. It's an all star season, and they're doing teams uh, of two this time instead of doing just single people. Now, I feel like I need to clarify something when they say all stars because I felt like I kind of got a little hoodwinked on this all star thing. When you say all stars, they mean people who have been on the show. Before. Yeah, and it's like. So it's all stars. Well, quite a few of them are the ones that have been finalists, and, and so, they were. Yeah, you know, it, it's just. <laughs> it was, I 
I would love for a season of all the winners to come back. Yeah, that would be yeah, really that would interesting. Be fucking baller to see who is like mm, one the of ultimate the best. One. Yeah, like one of the ultimate ones. But I think that should be the last season they do. Like if they're done with the show, yeah. the last season they should do is like every the, winner, the winner. Yeah. yeah. But this one was interesting because it's all stars. and They are teams. Yeah. It's teams of eight. Or I mean, teams of two, eight yeah. teams. They're eliminating every other week, mm-hmm. which is cool. I actually like this. Yeah, I like that. But the teammates don't have to be from the same season. Some of them are, but yeah, then some, some of them are, are motherfuckers yeah. that have never worked together, worked together yeah. or some shit, which I, d- I want to know how that went down. Well, I mean, it's a very close community. Mm-hmm. So. so it was interesting. Um, they have been expanding upon being doing new things with mm-hmm. Face Off, which was good because it was starting to get a little stagnant there after yeah. a few seasons of so much. Now they're starting to incorporate different, you know, things as far as like... The show's this evolving one. and that's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, and, that, and it's good. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah, I have a too, few definitely. ideas on who I think is probably going to be going home this <laughs> upcoming week. Yeah, for real. Uh, there's a few groups that I think are fucking... Just not putting a good foot forward. I don't. I think they like each other. I just don't know how well they. There's they a, think there's they a work market between like being able to, to hang out with somebody, and be their friend, and then to work with them. Yeah, and I think in yeah. in some of these groups' minds, they think they work well together, and they might, but I don't think they bring out the best in each other. Yeah, they that's can definitely a thing, they yeah. can work together, but they're not both bringing out their best. I agree. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Well, I think that's all we've got, right? Uh, uh, do you want It was the last Raw before Rumble. Um, I haven't watched any Raw in a month, at least. Yeah, but so... I will be watching the Rumble on Sunday. Yeah, I will. So, it, going into that, the big final thing for Raw ending before Rumble was you had Brock and you had Goldberg in the ring, mm-hmm. you know them about to you know throw down and that. shit like that because it is it's you know it's they're both in the rumble so it's we know it's happening and then go figure you hear the fucking bells the dong the dong and undertaker shows up and it's a it becomes a fucking three-way because then goldberg starts staring down undertaker and undertaker's looking at brock and then brock's looking at goldberg and it's all this thing and then you realize all three of these guys mm-hmm. are in the rumble You've got Braun Strowman in the Rumble. You've got fucking uh, Big Show, who is making it his goal to eliminate Braun Strowman in the Rumble, which I don't think that's going to happen. I'm sorry, that. Big Show. You're old. You're old. You're old, dude. I love you. <laughs> like, you're old. You're going to get tossed like a bitch. <laughs> um, you know, you got a lot of stuff going into the Rumble. And then it's also the Rumble, so you know they're going to bring back... They're probably going to bring back somebody interesting, too. One or, or two crazy people. They almost always have some sort of debuts at the Rumble. So, so we're, or we're, returns. Yeah, we're going to probably see... Best guess scenario, we're going to see a return. A, yeah. like, an old person that we'll probably only see for the Rumble. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to see a debut. Probably. You know, so... It, it It's worth it just to watch the Rumble. It's always worth it to watch yeah. the Rumble. It's, a, it's always a fun match to watch. Yeah. Uh, as far as the other matches, you've got some f- women's matches, which I kind of really just don't give a fuck. I don't even know what else the rest of the card is, to be honest. Yeah, I really don't. I have no really. clue. I don't know other than the Rumble match, really. I have no clue what the hell is going to be on the show. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> Jericho. No, Jericho is in the Rumble, but also at the same time. He's going to be in that in shirt cage. cage and shit. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, it's Kevin Owens versus... Seth Rollins. Is it Seth Rollins? Or is it Roman? I don't know. What's one of it's two? one of them. And you know what? I, and I don't be... care about either one. And here's the other thing. Here's the... <laughs> here's... The way they've been building things, either at the Rumble or at WrestleMania, I highly, highly think we're going to see the reunion of the Shield. Yeah, probably. And, you know, that's... Good for them. That's cool. I you don't know. care. Yeah, I, I don't really <laughs> uh, I mean, it's cool. It's yeah, like, it's hey, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah knock yourself out. that's... You know, whatever. Um, they ain't fucking like I don't know. That's yeah. fine. We're gonna have uh, Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch fighting for their titles. You're gonna have fucking Charlotte fighting somebody. Isn't it Bailey? Probably. It's 
fucking homely bitch. Um, <laughs> oh man, Bailey is. Yeah, homely. I'm sorry. <laughs> Seriously, sweetest that. girl, homely, extremely shit. talented though. Homely as shit, loved by everyone. If I could put a, and I'm not even gonna finish that. <laughs> Looks sentence. like your 12 year old brother. Yeah. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's other matches going on, but nobody really gives a fuck. You you couldn't hear what there were crickets chirping. Yeah, behind me. Like, nobody, just, nobody, gives no a fuck. fuck. Yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah. All uh, right. Is it chilling time? Yeah. Though? Well, Kickstarters. Do we have Kickstarters? Um, I the same ones we had last week. Oh, okay, um, cool. But I do want to say congratulations to Casey Pierce and hers. Uh, it's at one hundred thirty percent right now, so she's kicking ass and taking names with uh, yeah. that one. So congratulations! And I think most of them there's still at least twenty days or more yeah, on so, all of them. Yeah. So no, nothing new to add. Nothing this new week. to add, but definitely re up. Go check them out if you weren't able to last week. You know. Definitely this week. Check them out if you if you want to give. Get the to Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> you know if you want to give money. I always like Kickstarter is one of those things where I always see things like, man, I want to give money too, and then I just never end up doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like I don't actually. For me, it's mostly it. like, man, I wish I had money to give to that. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like I. I want to have the money to give to them yeah. and stuff. It's just usually when they're I happening, don't. <laughs> I don't have the money or I forget about it. And then I'm like, shit. Yeah. You know, so, but hopefully that'll change here soon. So. Exactly. Yep. Dance. Chill. Oh, well, what's that? Well, I mean, it was only just uh, the picture, but there was another print sketch. Yeah, there was. There was uh, a little sketch page for, for, for the new webcomic. For the new webcomic. So definitely check that out. Check out the Legacy Rising Facebook page. Yeah. Or you can check out LegacyRisingPublications.com, I believe is the website. Yeah. They're going to be there at that After Dark thing, aren't they? they yeah, uh, they're going to be uh, They're going to be there. Victor Dangerous is going to be there. It's the Kosai After Dark. Uh, they're doing a superhero theme this time. It's, I believe, February 4th. Yeah. Um, maybe we might go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be starting it. a new job here soon. That's a third shift job, so like it's gonna be tricky on whether I'm able to go or not. But I really, really want to. It's on a Friday. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was gonna say the fourth. Is a no, it's either a, no because usually the after dark things are like on a Thursday. Um, so we'll I don't see, know because February's the fourth is like either a Friday or the weekend because my friend's birthday party is. All right, well, since fourth. you mentioned it, I'll pull yeah, it up real quick. Say, pull but, it up. Yep. Yeah. Um. Let's see. All right. It's February 2nd. Oh, okay. Thursday, February 2nd from yeah, 5.30 to 10 at COSI. And, of course, that's here in Columbus, the Columbus uh, Sci- Center for Science and Industry. Um, if you guys have never been to COSI before and you live around here, I'm very shocked. Because <laughs> most people yeah, who live fourth, in this area. Yeah, as I was gonna say, the 4th is Saturday. Um, but, I've never been to COSI. I'm, I'm surprised. Well, you didn't grow up in Columbus, though. No. So, like, but anybody who grew up in Columbus, yeah. they pretty much been there. Because yeah, all, all the kids there go on their field trips and shit. But basically, it's, um, they're doing their, um, after dark thing, um, which is kind of like an after hours thing for adults only. Ooh. And, um, you buy a ticket and, like, there's drinky poos and all that shit. Yeah. But, um, come talk with local comic book artist Victor Dandridge and learn how your favorite comic books come to life. Sit on a Comic Con style panel with Chief Scientist Paul Sutter and discuss the science of superheroes. Be like some of your favorite superheroes and test out your skills like weather powers, elasticity, super strength, levitation, electricity, phone booth, quick change. Passionate about cosplay, compete in a cosplay contest. You can, plus, you can explore Kosai, ride the high wire unicycle, catch mysteries of the unseen world on the giant, huge, massive screen, and enjoy concessions in a cash bar. And they also have a buffet thing as well, which is pretty cool. I should not do the, like, change your outfit in the booth thing. I'm just going to end up popping out drunk and naked. They're drunk like, and what nude. kind of superhero are you? I'm the nudist. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, what is that? That is my weapon. But it sounds choice. like it's going to be a, a hell of a fun time. Yeah, so. definitely. So everybody check that out if you're in the area. Again, it's Thursday, February 2nd, 5.30 to 10. Woo. I have to be at work at 10, so if I win, I'd have to leave at like 9 o'clock, but I might still try to do it. Yeah. I believe the tickets are, I think, like $18 or something like that, Ooh. or $16 or $18, so not very much. And you can support your local independent comic book companies by Hell going. Yeah. So if you had enjoyed what you heard this week on the Basement Fodder Podcast, you can, of course, find us at our network home of digitalnerdage.com. And, of course, our own website, thebasementofdoom.wordpress.com, which I do not update quickly enough, I know. Uh, you can find us on social media, on Twitter, at Basement Fodder, and on Instagram, also at Basement Fodder. You can find us on Facebook under, under a plethora of different things, Todd of Basement Fodder, Dave of Basement Fodder, the original Basement Babe, the Dead Mother of Doom, the Basement Fodder Podcast, the Todd Files, and it came from the queue. And, of course, if you're in the uh, market for a custom action figure, you can find uh, me there under Titan Trap Customs. 
I believe that's all of the shilling. Yeah, I believe so. So that's going to wrap it up this week. As always, from the Basement of Doom, I'm Todd. I'm Dave. And until next time, the basement door is closed. And we won't fuck bearded women. Never, never, never.